In this video, we're just working through the quiz key. Um, and this is a quiz over basic differentiation rules, the quotient rule, and the product rule. Um, at times, uh, algebraic manipulation is appropriate before we take the derivative. Um, but it's actually, it's just, it's pretty simple. Um, if you've got a function like this that has multiple terms, and I'm thinking of a term as something that's separated by addition, or sometimes we say addition or subtraction, because subtracting is adding the opposite. Um, I'll just take the derivative of this term by term, so piece by piece. Um, um, I don't have to do any algebraic manipulation to this, so I can just get ready to compute f prime. So I write f prime equals, and if I've got a constant times an explicit function of x, so that's an, a function of x that's, that's sitting here that I can see, um, then I just bring the constant down, and then I use the power rule to take the derivative of x to the fourth. Now the power rule says that we bring the power down, and then multiply by x to the one less power, and four minus one is three. So that's our first term. Then we're going to add the derivative of the next term. Since there's a negative five there, we bring it down. Then I've got an x to some power. The derivative of x to some power is that power. So I bring that down times x to the one less power, two minus one is just one. If you don't want to write that one, you don't have to because x to the first is the same as x. The derivative of a constant times x is just our constant. And then the derivative of the negative one is just zero. So then we simplify. Two times four is eight. Five times two is 10. So that's our first derivative. To compute the second derivative, we just differentiate again. So I bring my eight down, and I've got the derivative of x to some power. So I get that power times x to the one less power. One less than three is two. The derivative of a constant times x is just our constant, and the derivative of a constant by itself without any x's explicitly mentioned is zero. So this turns out to be eight times three, which is 24, times x squared minus 10. And that's our second derivative. For the next problem, we're asked to do the same thing. We want the first and second derivative of this function. I think I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Whoa, that's very, very close. And I just pressed the focus button. Hopefully it'll focus a little bit better. Okay, it's not bad, not bad at all. Um, but with this one, it makes sense to rewrite it first. Um, I could use the quotient rule for this, but the quotient rule might be overkill. I've got a constant divided by x to some power. And over here, I've got a constant divided by x to some power as well. And then this third root of x to the fourth, that can be rewritten as a power. So we're going to do some rewriting first. If you're rewriting, that means you just want to write equals. Um, you're not computing g prime yet, so keep that in mind. And then we're going to use some exponent properties. So here are the exponent properties um, that we'll need. If you have a constant over a constant times x to the n, you can bring out the constant over the constant. And this x to the n, when you bring it up to the numerator, that becomes x to the negative n. And then we'll just use the power rule for that. So we'll need that for two of our terms. And then you have to remember that the nth root of x to the m is x to the m over n. So the index of the root, that goes in the denominator. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm looking at this fraction and I'm saying to myself, well, what's the constant there? Well, there's a two and a one, so there's an implied two over one, and that's an x to the first in the denominator. When I bring that up to the numerator, that becomes an x to the negative first because of this rule right here. Then over here, I've got a four, so I bring that down, and this is x to the four divided by three. That three goes in the denominator. And here, the constant is not three, it's one third. It's that one divided by three. And then when I bring this x cubed up to the numerator, 
that becomes an x to the negative 3. Now I have not done any calculus yet, all I did was rewrite, but now I've got a constant times x to some power plus a constant times x to some power plus a constant times x to some power, and I can use the power rule for the derivative. So now I'm ready to compute the derivative, so I write g prime of x. That's g, this is g prime. So when I take the derivative of g, I bring the constant down, and then the derivative of x to some power is that power times x to the one less power, negative one minus one is negative two. Then we bring our constant down, then we bring our power down, using the power rule again, and we multiply by x to the one less power. Four thirds minus one, that's four thirds minus three thirds, four thirds minus three thirds is one third, we bring that down. And over here I bring the one third down, um, and then I, I've got a, another power rule, so I bring the negative three down, bring the power down, multiply by x to the one less power. Negative three minus one is negative four. So I've got this now, and I simplify. Two times negative one is negative two. Here, there's an implied one under that four, so you can multiply straight across. That's 16 over three times x to the one third. And there's an implied one there as well. When you multiply straight across, you get negative three over three, which is negative one, x to the negative fourth. So this is g prime. Now if you're checking your answer in the back of the book, they're probably not going to write it like this. They'll probably write this as a root, and they'll write this with positive exponents. So this is what the answer would look like in the back of the book. That negative two, I might write it as itself over one, and x to the negative two can be rewritten using another exponent property. So if you've got x to a negative power, that's one over x to the same power but positive. So this is really one over x squared. And then I would multiply straight across, and that's the answer that I would see in the back of the book if I'm checking this derivative, that negative x squared there. And the 16 thirds comes down, and that's a third root, so that's a, um, or x to the one third. So the index of my root is three, and this is gonna be an x to the first inside. Or you can just call that a third root of x, that'd be fine. And here I've got a negative one, and using this property again, that will be a one over x to the fourth. So this is what the answer would look like in the back of the book. Either one of these is fine, but since we're taking the second derivative, I'm not going to use this one, I'll use this one to take the second derivative, because that's giving me a constant times x to some power for each of these terms. So I'm taking the second derivative, I bring the constant down, then I bring the power down, and multiply by x to the one less power, negative two minus one is negative three. Here I bring the constant down, then I bring the power down, the power is one third. I multiply by x to the one less power, one third minus one, that's one third minus three thirds is negative two thirds. And then here I bring the negative one down, bring the power down, multiply by x to the one less power. So that's our second derivative, it's just not simplified yet. So we multiply the coefficients to simplify, multiply straight across, and for our class this is fine, at least for right now, while we're just practicing computing derivatives. Now if I'm checking my answer in the back of the book, this is a 4 over 1 times a 1 over x cubed. So they're going to have a 4 over x cubed in the back of the book. Over here, I've got a 16 over 9, and that's an x to the 2 thirds in the denominator. An x to the 2 thirds is a third root of x squared, so they would write it like that in the back of the book. And this one is a 4 over 1 times a 1 over x to the fifth. When you multiply straight across, you get 4 over x to the fifth. So it's a little messy because it was at the bottom of the page, but that is what you would see in the back of the book. 
Now some students say, Ms. Townsend, do I ever have to do that? You don't have to do that for this quiz or the differentiation exam that we've talked about, um, but it is a good habit to practice going back and forth because when you see this, you should think this, and when you see this, you should think this. Um, so I always encourage my students to um, rewrite their answers in the form that you would see in the back of the book, um, just so that you get better at the algebra skills that you need in order to, to be fluent in this, to be able to go from this to this and vice versa seamlessly. Okay, so that was our A and B. We were asked to compute first and second derivatives, and we did. Next page, same thing. We want first and second derivative of h of t. Now I notice I've got some constants in the denominator here and I've got a constant in the numerator there. So I wanna do some rewriting before I compute a derivative. So I bring out the constant, that's a negative three over two times e to the t plus three t. And here the constant is four over five that's a t to the one-half, but it's in the denominator, so when I bring that up to the numerator, that'll be t to the negative one-half. So that's our h of t. Now to compute h prime, well, now we're ready to compute h prime. That was just a rewrite, there was no calculus involved. Now we're going to take the derivative of each of these terms separately and then add them together because the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. The derivative of a constant times e to some power is that constant times e to that power times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, but we have no chain rule yet. Derivative of a constant times t is just the constant. Here I've got a power rule, so I bring my constant down, then I bring my power down, and then I multiply by t to the one less power. Negative one-half minus one is negative one-half minus two halves. That's negative three halves. And then I bring my negative two down. The derivative of natural log of t is one over t. Um, so this is my answer. It's just not simplified. Negative one-half of four-fifths is negative two-fifths. And this, if I were checking my answer in the back of the book, they would multiply straight across. They would call that negative two over t. But we're about to take the second derivative, so it makes more sense to write this as negative two times t to the negative one, to bring that up to the numerator so that we can differentiate again. Um, so this is our h prime. And we could rewrite it. I'm not going to rewrite it this time because I wanna take the second derivative. Derivative of a constant times e to the t is that constant times e to the t. Derivative of a constant by itself is just zero. Here I've got a constant times t to some power. I bring my power down, or excuse me, I bring my constant down. Then I bring my power down. Then I multiply by t to the one less power. Negative three halves minus one, that's negative three halves minus two halves is negative five halves. Then I bring the negative two down, then I bring the negative one down, and I multiply by t to the one less power. Negative one minus one is negative two. And then we simplify. The twos reduce here, positive time, or negative times negative is a positive, so we end up with three fifths. And we'll stop right there. Although we could rewrite it I'm not going to this time. All right, now this one is just a sum of a bunch of multiples of trig functions. So what I would do before I take any derivatives is I'd factor out all the constants. Um, we could use the quotient rule here and here, but it's really not necessary um, since those are just constants in the denominator. So I'll just rewrite this as three times sine of x minus four cosine of x there's an implied one in front of that tangent, so this is one half of tangent of x, minus three fifths of secant of x, plus four times cotangent of x, I'm just rewriting that, and then this is a negative one half, there's an implied one there, a negative one over two times cosecant of x. 
All right, now we're ready to take the derivative. So we bring the constants down and then we take the derivative of the trig function. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Bring your constant down and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Now you can just put negative sine of x in parentheses and multiply. That's fine. Or if you prefer, and this would be fine with me as well, you can just say negative 4 times negative sine of x is positive 4 sine of x. Now that is essential, those parentheses are essential there, um, because without the parentheses it looks like you're saying 4 minus sine of x, or negative 4 minus sine of x, and that's not what we intend to say. Um, so we're, we're good here and here. Bring your constant down here. Derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. If you don't remember your rules, use your flashcards until you learn your rules. Bring your negative 3 fifths down. Derivative of secant of x is secant of x times tangent of x. Then the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. It's like the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Or you could multiply in that one step. 4 times a negative cosecant is negative 4 cosecant squared x. And then here, we bring the negative 1 half down, and the derivative of cosecant of x is oops, negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. A negative times a negative is a positive one half cosecant of x cotangent of x. All of your trig functions need angles. Every trig function needs its own angle. Don't write secant tangent of x, it's secant of x tangent of x. And this is our final answer. It's very long. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. And you're only asked to compute y prime here. So we're done. All right, so those are our basic rules. That was a standard over basic derivative rules. Now this is our second standard on this quiz. It's, pretty, it's a pretty straightforward quiz. Um, you've got the product rule on this one and the quotient rule. That's all part of D12. So this is our first function. And this is our second function. And I've got a product of those two functions. Now you've got a binomial times a binomial, or I mean, technically these aren't polynomials, but they're, they're behaving like binomials times binomial. So if we're using those terms loosely, and this is a binomial times a binomial. Um, if we distribute this with this, um, like that's one way of handling it. We could distribute first, do a bunch of algebra, and then use the appropriate rules for each of the individual terms that come from that product. Or we could just apply the product rule, which is what I recommend for this particular standard. Um, okay, so product rule says y prime is the derivative of the first times the second undifferentiated, so I don't do anything with it, I just write it down plus derivative of the second times the first. And derivative of the first and second, um, before I take those derivatives or before I, I substitute those functions right here and here, um, I want to do some rewriting because I have to take derivatives. So I'm thinking of that as a constant times x to the seventh there's an implied 1 in the numerator, so that's a 1 14th x to the 7th. And this one is already, already ready for differentiation, so we'll leave it alone. Over here, the exponential is fine. We don't need to do anything with that. But this, to take its derivative, it's helpful to write it as x to the negative 1 first. So this is 1 over x to the 1st, so when I bring that up to the numerator, it becomes an x to the negative 1 and then I'm adding those. So I like to do this just one line uh, product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first, 
and then I know whatever is in this other color, whatever is, this is telling me exactly what I have, have left to do. Once I compute that derivative and compute that derivative and just rewrite it, then I'm done. So let's do that. I've got a constant, so I bring it down, times the derivative of x to the seventh. So that's, bring the power down, seven, x to the one less power. Then I bring my constant, negative five down, then I bring my three down, and I multiply by x to the one less power. So that's three times x to the second. Over here, same thing, bring the power down, multiply by x to the one less power, negative one minus one is negative two. The derivative of a constant times an exponential is that constant times the exponential. Okay, and of course this seven over 14 can simplify to one half. So this is one half x to the sixth minus five times three, which is 15 x squared times, that was our derivative of the first, here's our second function, plus derivative of the second times the first. You can rewrite this if you want to, but it's not necessary, at least right now. So I would say after you simplify those derivatives, you're done. Now this last one is a quotient rule. It's a little bit harder to see. If this is my high function, and this is my low function, I know that I'm spelling high and low incorrectly. Um, that's okay, it just helps with our mnemonic. Remember what the quotient rule says, it's the derivative of high over low is low d high minus high d low over low low. And this derivative, derivative um, d, that d high and d low, that's an operator. So it's the derivative of the top function, derivative of the bottom function. So this is just our mnemonic. It helps us remember how to use the quotient rule. So according to the quotient rule, the derivative of f is low. So I, I just write the bottom function down. That's low d high. And I am going to tell myself, take the derivative of this. If you want to, you can just compute that derivative. So that's low d high minus high. Ooh, there's not very much space here. And you need parentheses around all of that because you're subtracting the whole thing. That's high, d low, and I've run out of room. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this on a separate sheet of paper because I don't like the way this looks. Okay. Let's try again so I have enough space. F prime is low d high. You almost have to put your, your paper in landscape orientation. Oops, d high, that's derivative of 2x cubed minus 3 plus cosine of x. Minus high. And make sure you put that in parentheses. We're subtracting the whole thing. Times d low. There we go, all over. Low, low, bottom function squared. All right, so that is my derivative. It's just not simplified. Okay, or excuse me, it's not, not not just not simplified, I also have to compute those last two derivatives, the derivative of the top function and the derivative of the bottom function. So I'm just going to rewrite everything in black. I'm pretty much done with it. It needs to be there. It's part of my derivative. I know it's easy to forget. This is slope, guys. We're calculating a formula for slope for this 
very um, involved quotient function. So that's low d high. Now let's compute d high. Um, I've got 2 times the derivative of x cubed. Derivative of x cubed is going to be a 3x squared. So I end up with the 2 times the 3, which is 6, x to the 1 less power, so that's 2. Derivative of the negative 3 is 0. And then the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So that's low d high. Minus high. And you need those parentheses, guys. You need those parentheses around the whole. That's low. You need parentheses around d high. As long as these have more than one term. So you're adding or subtracting something, you need parentheses around it. This is minus high. And then d low. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of this constant times the exponential is that constant times the exponential. And the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So I have low d high minus high d low over low low. Do not expand. Do not simplify. You're finished. That's the derivative. If you give me an x value, I can tell you the slope of the function at that x value by substituting it in um, to this formula.